And we've also got a COVID-related health issue, which is Bandito. He is missing final battle on Saturday after testing positive for COVID-19. He will not be at the show tomorrow. He was scheduled to defend the world title against Jonathan Gresham on the show. So on the final Ring of Honor final battle ever, at least in this current incarnation has lasted over 20 years, the champion is off the show because of COVID-19. So I guess we'll see what happens. Tony Khan said he will be helping out Ring of Honor for the show on Saturday. He said he wishes the company the best and, quote, I'll be doing some things to support them in their last show to make it a good show for them. He didn't clarify, nor was asked, what that entailed. But it is assumed to be talent. That's a pretty good assumption. Well, yeah, considering they've announced the talent, it seems like uh, Jay, Jay Lethal is the person that has replaced Bandito as the opponent for Jonathan Gresham. No word on whether that is a going to be a championship match yet. So, uh, Also, I guess of note, too, for those of you who wanted to see Bandito on the West Coast Pro Show, he obviously is off that as well. He was supposed to face ACH. He is now being replaced by Ray Oris. So those are the two updates on Bandito and uh, who's going to be filling in for him. And Jay Lethal, a legacy superstar of Ring of Honor, coming back. I know a lot of people, well, what about Dan Daniel Bryan, what about or Brian Danielson? What about CM Punk? It ends up being Jay Lethal, who uh, just left there not all that long ago. Jay Lethal, Jonathan Gresham. I was presuming going in that Jonathan Gresham was going to win the Ring of Honor title, and uh, I would suspect the same thing is going to happen with Jay Lethal as opponent. We've got Roxy versus Willow Nightingale for the women's title. We've got Dalton Castle, Rhett Titus, Silas Young, and Joe Hendry for the world television title. Six-man titles on the line. Shane Taylor Promotions versus Vincent Bateman and Dutch. And then, of course, we have got Josh Woods on the show. We have got OGK versus the Briscoes. Kenny King versus Shane Taylor. Uh, Taylor Russ and Tracy Williams versus Brody King. Homicide and Tony Deppin. Eli Isom actually is teaming with Taylor Russ and Tracy Williams. Chelsea Green. Allison K, Marty Bell versus Angelina Love, Mandy Leone, and Miranda, uh, Miranda Alizé, and Dragon Lee versus Ray Horace. So that's the full lineup for the show tomorrow. They got 11 matches announced for the show. One of them is a pre show match. So 10 matches on the main show tomorrow night. So you can check that out fight.tv, Honor Club, et cetera, et cetera. All the best, everybody, in Ring of Honor for. The end of a two-decade-long era. And as I've noted before, I mean, everyone is... I shouldn't say everybody. There are people that think this is the end, the end. But among the people within Ring of Honor who would have to know whether or not it's the end, the end, they are working towards the WrestleMania 2022 weekend. So if it is the end, the end, nobody that needs to know knows about it. They are They are proceeding as if... Everything that was said about the end of this era of Ring of Honor is, in fact, true. They are going dark after this show. Everybody will be a free agent. They are going to spend several months uh, revamping into, I guess, a super indie. I have no better way to describe it. And they will relaunch on WrestleMania weekend with shows. And from that point forward, I guess we'll see what the new Ring of Honor is all about. But they will continue to have television on Sinclair. I think it's going to be a bunch of best of shows for a couple of months, and then they'll be taping for the the television show. So we'll see what this all means over the next four or five months. Yeah, not really a whole lot to add to that. You you pretty much said it all right there. They're going to be doing best of shows, and everything kind of aims towards WrestleMania weekend. This company can still function as an independent, you know, as a super indie, as you said, because of having Sinclair support behind them. And you never know. Maybe this is actually in the landscape of things their their best case scenario. GCW is a, a company that operates without contracts, without the guise of contracts, and they're just trying to sell themselves on iPay per view. You have Impact who's very lucky in the fact that they have a television station behind them they're looking to try to make some waves and 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 and, you know hammer some things home so maybe it's better that ring of honor operates more like a super indie maybe he only has six people under contract or something like that or with 
long-term deals that they can kind of bank their television and all their their events around, you know, kind of moving forward. But we see it with PWG. We see it with a lot of other places. You know, sometimes there's a benefit to being able to call on whoever you can at the moment, whoever's hot that you take advantage of. This person said, if someone would have told me back in 2010 that Impact would be in a better place in Ring of Honor, I would ask what drugs you were on. Well, this is arguable. Who's in the better spot right now? Because, quite frankly, uh, Ring of Honor is going to have a much stronger TV than Impact. Impact, what they have going for them is they have wrestlers under contract, and it is much easier to book uh, long-term television storytelling when you have people under contract than when you don't. But as a promotion that is going to have weekly television, strong weekly television, at least stronger than Access TV, they're both going to have their shows available on the Internet for free. And Ring of Honor, as a probably very well-paying super indie, is going to have the pick of anybody that is allowed to work Ring of Honor for big shows. So I'm not sure that I would say that, that Impact is in a stronger position than Ring of Honor. I would say, well, we'll find out come WrestleMania weekend. But, I mean, in a lot of ways, they're they're on somewhat of an equal playing field. And in some ways, Ring of Honor is on a stronger playing field. Yeah, and, and who knows, maybe Impact will be able to benefit from this for those people that are looking for security. You know, and, and those people, if they're if you're trying to work towards a contract and making sure you have a steady paycheck every week and you want some security and some stabilization in your life, maybe that's the way that you want to go. Everybody's got different goals to try to work for. And one beneficial thing to both of those companies is they're owned by, you know, massive media operations. I'm not sure exactly what the level of Anthem is, but they were big enough certainly to buy their own station to put impact on. So that's what they've got going for them. And obviously, like you mentioned with Ring of Honor, having Sinclair behind them and having contracts freed up, you have a lot of money to throw at people during weekends. And who knows what that does to the landscape for valuable weekend space. You know, if Ring of Honor starts throwing around a whole bunch of money, what does that do for your default? Why that weekend, you're beyond your GCWs, your, your other people out there. Do you try to match that? You know, what direction do you try to go? So who knows what this landscape's going to be? It's certainly a, uh, a unique situation. Again, maybe it's just that as a Canadian who has always had health insurance, this doesn't seem... Max, smart enough to this, be a big this deal. This is going to go to the best of right here, Lance. Yeah. You were being corralled away by uh, by this dog. By a dog trying to eat my wife's uh, boots. Oh, man. Oh, they said they must be tasty. Yeah, if my wife gets home and her good leather boots are chewed up, I'm dead. You'll be chewed up next. Yeah, I'll be living outside with the dog. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.